struck down by the great hand of Gilgamesh himself. I, Eric, am here to deliver you 52 reasons to pick up Steam World Quest. Yes, hello there, fine folks. Eric here, and today I have what exactly what I just said 52 reasons to pick up Steam World Quest. You guys got the pun, the 52 pickup. <laughs> yeah, we're all having fun here, aren't we? So I figured what we could do today that to put a little bit of a spin on this 52 pickup is, um, well, I don't have the 52 reasons yet. We're going to find them out because I've started the game. I have got into the second, third, third chapter. We've just entered the third chapter. For me, it's 25 minutes into the game. For you, it'll probably be more like about an hour in. And I figured we could just play a little bit and help me explain the game to you. I have done a review, which you should totally check out. But this is a little bit more fun and we can be a little bit more off the cusp of this. And I can go a little bit deeper on some of the stuff that I really enjoy about the game. So that's what we're going to do today. And we're going to do it at the same time as getting 52 reasons why I love this game. And hopefully we get 52. I don't know how we're going to go here, but you keep count. <laughs> don't leave it up to me. Uh, the first reason is this lovely title screen. One, we're up to one. Uh, boom, we're into the game. Now I know what you're thinking, Eric, my good sir, how are you going to get 52 reasons by the end of this video? Well, the good news is, is that reason number two is the shopkeeper. Now, right here we have the shopkeeper, who is actually a really colourful character, and unfortunately I can't show her off at this stage because she's not really saying much apart from what are you buying? No, she hasn't checked that at all. Just browse items for sale. Uh, and so the shopkeeper is actually quite interesting. Obviously you can buy like your items. This is very early in the game. There's more stuff you can buy later, trust me. Then also there is crafting cards, uh, which at the moment I haven't even opened before, but you can see there's just a couple cards to craft for each character here. Not a super complex system, but it is kind of fun and interesting. I'm really reaching here. That was three, by the way. <laughs> we are into our first battle here, and the versing a couple of drillbees. What are they actually called? Can I find out the name of these bees? Hold on a second. Um, actually, this is reason number five, is that... Did I skip a reason? <laughs> We're going to get through these really quickly, by the way. Um, it is a drillbee. There you go. You can scan enemies in it, it sort like by pressing the the what is it the L bumper you can actually go over to an enemy and you can see if they have any effects any stats and, and different thing, things like that what are they weak to and and really exploit the stuff which becomes actually very very important later on in the game because there's effects that you'll be like I don't know what that does or I need to know if that's on the enemy or not especially like reflection effects and you can find out that through this anyway let's get into the, our first battle here now What's really interesting, what I just love about these... God, oh, I, can't, I can't explain how much I love these battles. But what I really love about these battles is trying to get these, these things that are called heroic chains. And basically linking three character cards from the same character in a turn. So, obviously you play three cards per turn. Now you'll notice here that the colour at the bottom of the card tells you whose character that is. That's the blue one, so that's our little magey down there. We have the red one for our knight, and then we... Do we have any green cards? There we go. We've got a green one over here um, for our... Big Hulk, let's call him. So, what you want to do now is you want to be trying to plan three of those cards in a row. Can I do it? Oh, oh, that was reason number six. But reason, here we go. Let's go into reason number seven here. And that is this little complex system of actually building up the steam up the top. Now, again, another thing that I've talked about before, but up the chippy toppy toppy top of the screen, you'll notice there's a bar up there. We don't have any cogs at the moment, but if I was to start selecting cards, you'll notice that we start building up that steam up there. Now, that actually depends on the cards that I am choosing. I guess the long of the short of the story here is that the cards, these weaker cards here that you see of the three that are on the right-hand side, they are going to build up the steam power, and the cards on the left-hand side along with the cogs, they're stronger, but that they are going to use up that steam power depending on the attack. So at the moment, we've only got two blues, we've got two reds and two greens. We can't get any three combos. But of course, every turn, reason number eight, people, is that we can, we can discard two cards out of our hand uh, and this is really important to be doing as often as possible as we'll kind of work out as we get through some more of these battles so at the moment I've got no need for mending all my characters are at full health so I'm gonna get rid of first of all this green card and hope for something good which we did get something better and I'm gonna get rid of this green card over here because again that's not doing anything for me and we got another green one back so it's not the best but now we do have three red cards and you're probably thinking Eric but you can only play two of them well the good news is and reason number nine is that as you are using these cards, you're actually building up that steam power for that turn. Meaning that if I was to use two of these cards, even though I haven't actually got that steam power yet, I can use the steam power on the third card here. So the two, as you notice, got two at the top. I now have two steam power, even though I haven't actually played out that turn yet. So we're going to do that. We're going to use this ultra strong dilly dilly binger dinger attack. 
one, and four. So there we go, we got our fourth attack. And the fourth attack depends on the the character, what they have equipped. All right, so let's keep banging on through this encounter. You notice that now we've actually got two blues here and a third one that we can use. So we can just go ahead and just do a full blue turn. But there's one thing that I'm gonna tell you, doing that right now, would be a waste of my turn because I have more optimal things that I can do with this. If you really want to get into the nitty gritty, d dirty part of it, reason number 10 by the way, if you really want to get into that, then you should be doing the optimal thing of discarding even just for your next turn. I have two red cards and a green one down the bottom for the next turn. Now that's not really, like I, I could get rid of that green one. I don't need that at the moment. I can start planning and hoping that I have three red cards. Then the next then the next turn is already ready for me. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to get rid of this green one. We got a blue one. We'll try one more time and we got another green one. So we'll just let this attack finish out. We'll put the shield on top of us all being bada boom bada bum. Let the bee attack with its bum. Now the very bottom left hand corner of the screen, you're going to notice there's a deck size. At the moment we have 8 cards left in that deck. Now I already got rid of my 2 healing cards, so if I needed a healing card, I, I'm not going to draw one. No matter how many, like until I've gone through those 8 cards in that deck, I'm not going to find that healing card. If you have one really powerful card in your, in your deck that you just want to use, um, and you've already used it, don't plan for it again until you've gone through that full roster of 24 cards. For a long time in this game, I just kept doing that. I was just hoping for this card that I'm like, oh, that's right, I actually used that card. That was kind of pointless of me to be hoping for it. Anyway, we have completed that battle. We actually gained a level. As you notice, we gained actually a lot of reason number 11 here. We gained a lot of experience for every single battle that we do, which is kind of ridiculous, like the amount that we get. And then the stats that you actually get for leveling up, like I gained 55 health there. It went from 135 to 190 in, in one level. Reason number 12 is that you get a lot of stats per level. We're getting through them. <laughs> now for you fine folk who have made it this far in the video, let's jump through a couple more reasons here. Reason number, what are we up to? 12, 13 is this beautiful kind of menu. Number 14 down the bottom hand corner, which is the display timer. Because Nintendo doesn't do that for us. Thank you. So if you actually jump into your deck, this could be something that like in some card games, it's super confusing and hard to understand. They managed to make it very, very easy to understand that on the left hand side is the cards that, that you can equip. And then on the right hand side of the screen is the cards that I have equipped. Anyway, I'm sure there was a reason number 15 in there somewhere. So let's say we're up to 16 now. Oh, reason 16 is the equipment because of how simple it is to understand. Now some games do a really, really confusing job of equipment saying you have to put this on your chest and you can only have two loin costs equipped at the same time. And this just says, all right, you have two accessories and a weapon. Reason number, what are we up to? 16, 17, somewhere around there. You can sprint. Holding down the R button allows you to not only speed up combat, which should be reason number 18, it allows you to sprint. You can see a treasure chest behind those bees. Reason number 19 is, is the fact that they have treasure kind of littered around the map. That gives you reason to, to go the other ways and find stuff. And it's not always just that simple as just walking off the side of the screen. Sometimes it's a matter of like I'm doing here, just you know running to the side of the screen, hoping that, that there is a secret there that you can do. And trust me, there is a lot of secrets. And a lot of the time when you finish one of these maps, you're not going to have everything. That brings me into reason number 21, is that when you finish a map, you're going to get a percentage of how much treasure you manage to collect. And, and most of the time, to be perfectly honest, most of the time, I wasn't collecting all that treasure. It was kind of killing me. Anyway, let's continue on with this encounter. Again, we have already three pretty good attacks here with, with uh, I should remember the name, but let's call it Ready here, Ready Player One. Uh, and I want to build up probably the blue for the second turn. So I'm going to go ahead and drop this steam punch over here. We've got another green one. We've got to drop that as well. We've got another green one. That's some bad luck. Welcome to the world of randomness. I use the bravado first because that actually increases my attack. And then I use these other ones and we go nuts. We hold down the R trigger this time. Make sure that we're doing that to speed up the combat. As you can see, it goes at a steady little pace here. And we're on to the second round here. So we do have our three attacks except her book. Book Bash is a super weak attack, and I do not want to be using that, so we're going to go ahead and drop a couple of these punches, and we're going to see if we can get anything better. We got a cold, cre creeping cold, so that is creepy, and it is cold, and it is better than a Book Bash. Uh, it is going to cost us some Coggies, though, so um, that sounds like it's out of, like, banjo or something. Did you collect your Coggies on the way past? <laughs> now, next turn, we're going to speed this little bugger up. Encounters, they, they tend to, reason number 22 here, they tend to not take that long. Like, you'd think that they would go for a little while, but they tend to actually, like, speed through them fairly fast. And as I said, with the amount of experience that you get per battle, I don't find it that annoying, like, because I'm just leveling up that fast. And, and the combat isn't, like, it's just enjoyable combat. We simply can't do a really good attack here, so I'm just going to shield up, we're going to attack, 
and we're gonna do one of them and then next turn see we're building up some cogs here it's not the best attack but we are still kind of doing something for ourselves next round remember how i said you can scan an enemy and actually see what's on them see the the the, the swords below the health bar there if i click on them it says it's now in a counter stance which it has a chance to counter every time i attack we have two really strong attacks that will probably almost at least finish off one of these and only one of these but that's still good for us okay we have mopped up that battle and that has just informed me that i have been jumping around number ship all over the place so we're going to catch up with a couple of numbers here the one is the beautiful art style that is kind of this hand painted look i really enjoy the look of this game and even if you look in the background there there's sometimes this neat little details what button zooms in now this one here good, good old nintendo switch and its zoom feature See the back there? Just a couple of robots having lunch. He's just kicking his foot up in the air. Uh, and reason number 20 can be there is stuff to read around the place. I don't know. I'm scraping the barrel here, guys. For the sake of not dribbling on with endless reasons that are just pointless as to why you should buy this game, it's just a good game. And I will have a bunch more reasons. Scroll down the screen now as I blabble on for a second so you can get all the reasons so that we actually made up 50. There we go. That's all the reasons. However, just it is a good game. If you saw what you liked here and you liked what you saw, then you know what to do. <laughs> and if you like this video, you also know what to do because you just have to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and remember, for great Nintendo entertainment, you can count on me. For today's end screen, I want to talk about the wall. Hello, wall. Oh, I love you, wall. Now, you may have noticed that I've actually changed all the stuff on the wall back there. That is because... Uh, it was really boring, and I had a, I know a bunch of you really liked the old room and the way that was set up, so I have changed it and made it look a little bit nicer. I know it's not perfect, I know it's not as good as the old room, but I hope you enjoy it. I hope you love it as much as I do, because we all love this ball, don't we? Ah, oh, goodbye!